Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our seventh year online class. In the last class, we studied, uh, we started the sixth lesson, evolution, uh, and we have studied two important topics. Okay, the first topic is theories. Okay, there are five theories we studied. Five theories related to the evolution of different types of living organisms. And the second topic is the geological time scale. Okay, so these two are the topics already we have completed in the last class. So today also we are going to study about some more topics. So listen very carefully. So first we are going to study about one important two more question. See, the two more question is form is protobionts. See, protobionts meaning the abiotically produced molecules. Okay, the abiotic molecules spontaneously involved in self-assembled to form a droplets and these droplets consist of some watery substance and this watery substance maintain a constant chemical environment and this chemical environment is totally different from the surrounding environment and scientists call these molecules as protobiotes so just imagine See, it's an abiotically produced molecule. This abiotically produced molecule or this abiotic molecule is spontaneously involved in the self-assembled program. Okay, spontaneously involved in self-assembled to form a droplet. Okay, to form a droplet. And this droplet consists of a liquid substance. So, watery portion is present inside the droplets. And inside these droplets, a chemical, a constant chemical environment is maintained. And that environment is entirely different from the outer environment. Okay. So these molecules are called protobionts. These molecules are called protobionts. So it's a very important to mark question. Hope you understood this to mark question. Then. Now we are going to study about one important experiment. Listen very carefully. Two scientists. In the year of 1953, two scientists, Ure and Miller, okay, these two scientists, okay, they have done, togetherly done, one experiment. And according to these two people's experiment, some organic substance lead to the appearance of some organic, say, living organs. That means, some living organisms evolved or obtained from the organic substance, from some organic substance. Okay, so listen very carefully. It's a very important five mark question. You remember the experiment. Say, in this experiment, they have taken a mixer of gas. Okay, they have taken a mixer of gas. Mixer of gas means ammonia, uh, then methane, hydrogen. Okay, so like these gases, they have taken some amount of these gases. And these gases are allowed to circulate over a electric discharge. That means over a tungsten electrode. Okay, so just to imagine this is a tungsten electrode. So, this in this chart, they have used this diagram. You see, this is an electron, uh, sorry, uh, tungsten electrode, okay, or electric discharge. So, over this tungsten electrode, they allow to circulate some mixer of gases. Gases, name already I told you, methane, ammonia, hydrogen, these gases. And the bottom side, one more flask is there. This flask consists of boiling water, contains some boiling water. So, when the water is boiling inside this flask, more amount of steam is released. So, these steams are allowed to mix with this mixer of gas. Already here, mixer of gas is circulating over this tungsten electrode. Now, the steams released from this water, this boiling water, are also allowed to mix with the mixer of gases. Okay, then now here one chamber is there. Okay, name of this chamber is called condenser chamber. Now this steam is allowed or involved in condensation process. Okay, involved in condensation process. Finally, water like substance is produced or water is produced. Okay, when the steam is involved in condensation process, automatically water is produced. Okay, so this water is collected or gathered in a U shaped tube. You say two. And one very important point this experiment, they have done this experiment 
for one week continuously. Continuously one week they conducted this experiment. Okay, and finally they analyzed the solution or the liquid substance they got from this experiment. Okay, so the liquids are collected in this flask. And they analyzed this liquid. They, so when they analyzed this liquid, they observed some organic compounds were there present in the liquid. For example, glycine, alanine, aspartic acid, like that, some organic compounds were present in the liquids they got from this UCF tube. Okay, so finally they came to a conclusion. In nature also, a mixture of gas is there. Okay, so these gases and the main carbon source of this gas is the methane. Okay, so from these organic compounds, large number of living organisms is evolved. Okay, then by using the same experiment, the later period they have um, produced some amino acids and some like that substance also. Okay, so the main aim of this experiment is. According to this experiment, with the help of a mixture of gas, large amount of organic substance we can produce. And once upon a time, this organic substance only lead to the appearance or the formation of living organs. Understand, my dear students? So I hope you all understood this topic. Then, our next topic is Evidence for Biological Evolution. See, Evidence for Biological Evolution. Paleontological Studies. See, this paleontological studies means the studies about the prehistoric life of the earth by using fossils. So, the Paleontological studies meaning it's a studies of prehistoric life of the earth by using some fossils. Here fossils meaning more no. It's a dead particles preserved or present in some region of the atmosphere is called fossils. Understand? And these fossils are the original or true witness for the evolution. Okay? And the process of formation of these fossils or the process of preservation of these fossils in the sedimentary rock region is called fossilization. So it's very important to mark also. So fossilization meaning the process by which the animals and plants bodies are preserved or animals and plant body parts are preserved in the sedimentary rock region is called fossilization. And already told you fossils are the very very important witness for the evolution. Understand of you? And this fossilization process is comes under three categories. Okay. The first category is actual remains. Okay. The first category is actual remains. See, actual remains mean say after the death of the living organism. Okay, the hard part of the living organism, hard part example you can say shell, teeth, bones, these are the example for the hard parts of the living organism. So these hard parts are preserved, okay, so preserved in some region of the atmosphere, okay, preserved in some region of the atmosphere, not only in the atmosphere, inside the sea water, marine water also, okay, because you all know inside the sea water also there are large number of living organisms are living. So, the in living organisms which are living inside the sea water also having some hard parts. Example, the bones, the teeth and the shell. Okay, these are the example for the hard, hard parts. Okay, so these hard spots present in the marine animals also preserved in the sediment region or covered with the sediments of the marine water. Understand? And you all know the salinity is one of the salinity is one of the nature of the sea water. So, this salinity also protect these hard parts from further decay, from further decay, understand of you? So the hard parts of some organisms are preserved in some region of the environment, it is called atmosphere, it is called 
axle makes. Question of you. Then, one example. See, the first example is the one very large elephant. Okay, very large elephant, and these elephant species were lived in the world before two thousand million years ago. Okay, so two thousand million years ago, a very big elephant species were lived in the world. Okay, so name of this elephant is called woolly mammoth. Okay, so it's a very the body of this animal um, uh, elephant is fully covered with hairs, hair-like structures. Okay, and it's very big uh, elephant than the present elephants. Okay, so and these elephants were lived in the world twenty to twenty two thousand years ago. Okay, so nowadays some hard parts of these elephants, example the tusk. Bones and the teeth of these elephants were discovered in some region of Siberia. Some regions of Siberia. So, from with the help of these hard parts of this elephant, we can easily understand. Once upon a time, these elephant species were lived in the world. They are living in the world. So, this is the first example. And the second example is the animals and human beings lived in the ancient city of Pompeii. Okay, ancient city of Pompeii. So these animals and plants fossils were nowadays observed in the volcanic ash of Mount Vesuvius. Okay, so the Mount Vesuvius consists of large amount. Uh, this region has more amount of volcanic ash. So the when the scientists analyzed, okay, they analyzed these ash, they discovered some fossils, and these fossils are the Fossils of animals and human beings lived once upon a time in the Pompeii city. Okay, so now we have studied two important examples for this axle remains. Okay, so axle remains meaning some hard part of the animals preserved in some region of the atmosphere. Next of you, then. So already I told you this fossilization process is comes under three categories. So, so the first category is our axle remains. And the second category is petrification. Petrification meaning see some organs of some organism. Okay, so are some body parts of some organisms. So they preserved in the earth in the form of minerals. Okay, so after the death of some organisms. Some actual part are the original parts of the animals or organisms is preserved in the air or in the atmosphere in the form of minerals. It is called petrification. This is called a petrification. So minerals meaning example the iron, magnesium, calcium carbonate. These are the examples for the minerals. So these minerals we are getting from the atmosphere or we are getting from the soil. Okay, so these minerals are produced from some parts of the animals that are lived also upon a time. Understand a few? So this is called petrification. Okay, then the third category is natural mold and cast. So the third category is natural mold and cast. Here meaning say after the death of some animals, they live a impression in the soft muddy region of the earth. Okay, and later these impressions became very hard and changed into stone-like structure. Okay, so this stone-like structure is called mold. This stone like structure is called mold. So it's a very important two marcos nerves. So after the death of some organism, the dead body or the dead part of these organisms leave a impression in the soft muddy region. And after many years or many days, this soft muddy region became very hard into stone like structure. So this stone like structure is called mold. Okay, then the empty places which are present in this mold is filled with some minerals. Filled with some minerals and became very hard. So this is called cast. This is called a cast. So now we have completed two two marcos mold and 
test. Understand of you? Then say, listen very carefully. Next one important question. Corporolates. Okay, corporolates meaning some organisms fecal matter. Fecal matter meaning the waste released from the body of the living organisms. So some organisms fecal matter or the waste materials were preserved in the atmosphere or preserved in the earth. Okay, so this is called coprolytes. This is called coprolytes, and this material or these substances are used to understand what type of food they have eaten once upon a time. Okay, so by using these crop coprolytes, we can easily understand the nature of diet or the nature of food eaten by the animals which are lived once upon a time. Understand a few? So now we completed three important categories of this fossilization. So fossilization meaning the process by which the animals and the plants parts are preserved in the sedimentary rock is called fossilization. And this fossilization comes under three categories. These three are the three categories. One is axial remains, second one is petrification, and the third one is natural mountain cast. Understand a few? Then, next we are going to study about some important 3 mark and 2 mark questions. Okay? The first 3 mark question is homologous structure. See, homologous structure, listen very carefully. Homologous structure means some organisms and body parts of similar in their structure but they are performing different functions so this structure is called homologous structure for example the four limbs of human beings bat whales and cat four limbs of human beings bat whales and cat so the four limbs of all these organisms showing similarities in their structure but the functions of these four limbs is, are different from one animal organism to another organism. For example, the four limbs of all these organisms is made up of six bones. That means there are six bones are present in the four limbs of human beings, hat, then bat and also bats. Understand? For example, the bones, the humors, then radius, vulna, carpals, metacarpals, phalanges. Okay, so these are the six, six types of bones present in the four limbs of these organisms. Okay, so structurally all these organisms of four limbs are having these bones. But the functions of these four limbs is different from one organism to another organism. For example, bat, they are using these four limbs for flying purpose. Whales, they are using their four limbs for swimming purpose. Cat, they are using their four limbs for walking purpose, walking and running. Okay, like that, the functions of the four limbs is limbs are different from one organism to another organism, but the structure, the four limb structure of these organisms are similar. That means four limbs of these organisms are made up of six types of bones. So this type of structure is called homologous structure, and this homologous structure brings a evolution. Name of this evolution is called divergent evolution. Name of this evolution is called a divergent evolution. So this is one of the examples for the homologous structure. And we can say some more examples for this homologous structure. Okay? For example, the throat of Bohemian plants and the tendrils of Pisumsa type. Okay, so thrones of the Bohemian plants and the tendrils of Pisumsa type. So the structurally these two organs, that means the thrones and the tendrils are similar in their structure, but the functions are different. For example, the thrones of these bougainvillea plants are act as a defense organ, protect the plants from the enemies. Understand a few? But the tendrils of the Pisum sativum is used for climbing purpose. Understand? So structure is similar, function is different. So this is a second example for this homologous structure. So this homologous structure bring evolution. It is called divergent evolution. It is called divergent evolution. One more question. Okay, then second one is called analogous structure. Analogous 
analog structure. See, analog structure means the structure is different in some organisms. The body parts or the body organs are different in their structure, but their functions are similar. Functions are similar. For example, the first example is the wings of the bats and insects. Okay, we can see a lot of difference in the structure of wings and the structure of sorry, the structure of uh, uh, bats wings and the structure of the wings of insects. Okay, so structure of the bats wings and the structure of the insect wings. We can see large number of differences, but their function is only one function, flying purpose. Both organs are using these wings only for flying, flying purpose. So structurally different, but they are performing or doing similar functions. So this structure is called analog structure. This structure is called analog structure. So this analog structure brings a evolution. Name of this evolution is called convergent evolution. Name of this evolution is called it convergent evolution. And we can say some more examples for this analog structure. For example, the eyes of the octopus and mammals. You all know the eyes of the octopus is very big. But the eyes of the mammals are very small. So structurally that we can see some difference. But the function is only one function, visual sight. Okay, it's not there. Uh, then one more function, so example we can say the uh, flippers of penguin and dolphins. Okay, penguins using their flippers for working purpose or running purpose. But the dolphins using their flippers for the swimming, swimming purpose. Okay, so the structure is but a different okay, structure is different. Understand a few? So now we have completed this analog structure. Understand a few? Then third next three mark question is vestigial organ. Okay, see vestigial organ. Vestigial organ means sim in common meaning useless or functional organ. The common or the simple meaning of this vestigial organ is useless organ okay, or functionless organs. See, in some organisms, the ancestral body of the organisms, some organs are well developed. But the ancestors are not used these organs properly. So, during the course of time, or generation after generation, automatically these organs are disappeared from the organism. Okay, or these organs are not using any function. So these organs are called vestigial organs. These organs are called vestigial organs. For example, the cecum of herbivorous animals. Okay, cecum of herbivorous animals. See, cecum is one of the important parts of the digestive system. And the main function of this part is this part playing a very important role in the cellulose digestion. You all know the herbivorous animals eating more amount of cellulose rich food materials. Okay, for the easily digestion of the cellulose rich food material, the cecum is very very important for the herbivorous animals. But in human beings, we are not eating more amount of cellulose rich food materials. Okay, so the size of this cecum is reduced into one, another one structure is called vermiform appendix. So vermiform appendix is a useless organ in human body. Okay, useless organ in human body. Understand a few? So this is one example. Understand a few? Then next ear muscles. Okay, the muscles present in the ear. So this there is no role or there is no function for this muscle. Okay. Then next one is next uh, what example we can say the wisdom teeth. Okay, wisdom teeth is also a useless teeth. Understand? So these are the examples for the vestigial organs. So vestigial organs mean organs without any functions. Okay? So these organs are not doing any function. Functionsless organs. Then next question is connecting link. Connecting link. Meaning the organs organism showing the character of Two different organisms is called connecting link. Okay, organism showing or organisms having the characters of two different organisms is called connecting link. 
example peripatus so these organisms showing the characters of both annelids and arthropods a peripatus is the organism this organism we can see the characters of annelids and the characters of arthropods in the body of peripatus first of you the next example archaeopteryx okay next example for this connecting link is archaeopteryx this archaeopteryx showing the characters of both reptiles and apes both reptiles and birds or apes understand of you understand so now we have completed four important two mark questions then last one is a terrestrial organ see terrestrial organ meaning the sudden appearance of vestigial organ in a organism sudden appearance of vestigial organ in a organism is called a terrestrial organ example the appearance of tail like structure in a newborn baby okay in a newborn human baby is called is the example for this attractive part just a few so now we have completed five important two mark questions also okay my dear students so today we have completed first we studied one important two mark questions okay protobionts and so very important two mark question then we studied about one important five mark question urey miller experiments and now we have completed the evidence for the biological evolution is a very important five mark question three evidences i said okay the fossilization okay fossilization with three categories comes under three categories one is the axon remains second one is the petrification third one is the natural um, mold and test okay so these are the three categories of the fossilization is a very important five mark question then now finally we studied about some five two mark questions understand of you so i hope you all understood today's class and try to study today itself and send the answer to me the last class also some students send the answer to me i really i appreciate you uh, and today also try to send the answer to me i will correct and give to you okay thank you students we will see in the next class